Hey, what's up? My name is Devin, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a vinyl pitch warp effect in Ableton. So, here's an upright piano without any effect. Add the effect. Mad vibe. You can throw it on a master bus. Here's a live recording from my band. No effect. There's the effect. Anyways, um, the full version is available for purchase on my website, but I'm going to cut now to a screencast where I basically walk you through um, how I built it. So, we'll see you there. Alright, so this effect is inspired by the Nord vibe effect, hence the word vibe. Um, basically, it's just kind of like this warble to the sound, and I've added some filter delay, some reverb. Um, as well as some like more customizable glitch options. Just want to show you what it sounds like with all these parameters cranked. So this is the full version that is available on my website, uh, but we'll build something similar here in just a sec. Right, so that's with the glitch and everything cranked. So the speeds are up, the glitch is up. But basically, what's going on here is we have three layers of of a you know warp effect. The first is the pink, and this is just our primary warble and. You know, at its slowest speed, you know, about half the depth. It's very, very subtle. So this is where you might want to start. Turn it up. Start to notice it a little bit more. Now this random organic is what kind of takes away the predictable nature of this first layer. If we listen to that, we hear how consistent that is because it's just a sine wave. Um, but this uses another LFO to modulate the speed of the initial LFO. That way we don't pick up on any repeating patterns. And so it sounds a little bit more organic, hence organic and the color green, of course. Now, moving on to glitch. So this is a whole nother layer of the effect, which just kind of pops in at random um, using a random wave. And it just gives those sudden jump effects as if your cat were to jump onto the record player and you can isolate it and just have it. So have a steady sound and a glitch, um, you know, at whatever frequency you choose here. And then this is just customizing the filter, reverb amount, and delay. So that's the full version that I have uh, built, and it's available on my website. There's also a light version, which works for any other version of Ableton below Suite without Max for Live. And what you would do for this is you would just map these knobs to create the effect, uh, automate these knobs. And we'll go over how to do that here in just a sec. I'm going to um, just start building it with you guys. So let's uh, jump into our audio effects here. And I've disabled both of these, so we're back to the dry keys sound. We're going to start with auto filter to get into the zone, the auto filter zone. Um, bring it down to about 650. This just kind of rolls off some of those lows and makes it sound a bit more like an old record. Thins it out a little bit. It's a nice start. Um, so this is modeled after, you know, kind of like the vibe effect on a Nord. So next we're going to add some simple delay. This is the crux of the effect here. We're going to change it to repitch mode, so that makes it behave more like an analog delay, so that adjusting the time also adjusts the pitch. Um, and you'll see why that's important here in just a sec. I'm going to group it. That way we have control of the macros. And turn the wet all the way up. So I've synced it so that we're just dealing with one audio channel. Time is all the way down, wet is all the way up, and we're in repitch mode. Now, map time, well, let's label macro one first. I just like the word warble, so that's what I use. Map to warble, and we're going to adjust this range here from 1 to about 12, and you can play with this if you'd like, but I find that anything beyond 12 gets to be a little too extreme. So this means that we now have the full range of this value, uh, or of this knob, to control a fairly narrow you know, range of values, rather than trying to just map something very tiny with this. Um, so check it out. When I use my mouse, we get the effect, right? So this is all achievable in any version of Ableton. Um, these effects come with all the versions. So what you could do at this point is just make a MIDI clip and access your envelopes here. And you want to go to, well, let me just go ahead and select it, click on it. And hopefully it should pop up now. Yep, warble. So what we'll do is we'll make this clip an irregular length so that if your song is in 4-4, four, four, um, it's not just going to loop and create this kind of like predictable effect. It will loop at a you know odd rate that the ear won't be able to pick up on. So we'll just draw in some triangle waves and 
if you have the latest version of Ableton, you should be able to just do that insert shape feature, but I don't actually have that yet. And you just want to make sure it ends at the same place that it begins. Here we go. So we've got this playing. And now if we go in here. All right. It's a little extreme. I think those smaller waves are a bit too sudden. So maybe we just take the uh, effect down a bit. We could stretch it out. And basically, you can customize this. You can make it as long as you want um, to fully customize the effect. Let's check it out now. All right, another way to reduce the effect would be to open up this, edit the macro map, and change this to something like 8. And now it'll be even more subtle. All right, so it's there, but it's very subtle. Great, so that's the first place to start. But if you want something that you can just drag onto any track without the need to automate anything, well, you'll need uh, Ableton Suite, and you'll need Max for Live. And we're going to use the LFO plugin here, drag it in here. And let's go ahead and reset this to where we were. Go back to 12. Uh, great. So we've got this sine wave going, and we'll bring it down to about 0.4 hertz and depth all the way up. And we're going to map it to Warble. Great. So now it's modulating that by itself. And it's subtle. But if you were to really listen and, you know, take a pretty acute ear, it's probably not a major concern, but you would detect this, like, consistent um, warble and it would say be like yeah that doesn't actually sound like a real broken record so to fix that we'll add another LFO and this is what I was talking about at the beginning um, we'll bring the rate way down and with that we're gonna then modulate the speed of this LFO so it's gonna go crazy here for a second because it's modulating the full range of this rate so the way we are gonna tweak this is take the depth way down so we get this narrow range of modulation and bring our offset down so that we get back into that territory of where we were. I'll bring this even down a little bit. And all right, so we're going from, yeah, I mean, this looks like a pretty good wave. Let's check it out. Yeah, maybe you can reduce the depth here a little bit. And as you do that, just bring the offset down a little bit to make sure that you're always going down to one. Um, that way you're reducing as much latency as possible. Because effectively, effectively, what's happening here is literally we're going between you know a one millisecond delay and a twelve millisecond delay. Um, okay, so as you can see, this this wave looks nice and pretty and irregular, somewhat unpredictable. Maybe we can increase the depth here just a little bit, just to get some more craziness out of it. Cool. Okay, well, that's that. I mean, at this point, the only other things you might want to do are add some filter delay. So that's kind of a Easy fix, you just drag that in there. And I usually just want to stick to one channel here. Probably bring this down. Go to time, go to about 250. And what do we have? Bring this up. Sounds real nice. Cooking with fire, my friends. So at this point, great. You've uh, built a pretty cool little vinyl warp effect. Um, what I wanted to point out was, you know, so a couple of the different uses here. I mean, you could use this on piano, you could use this on synth, um, you could even try using it on a vocal. That might sound bizarre, but, um, I mentioned Julian Pollock. Well, he's produced the upcoming record for a friend of mine, Miranda Joan, and there's a really cool song on there. I'm actually just going to go back to my effect. Um, there's a song on there called Girlfriend, and it's got this piano, um, riff that's like this. So I realized that all these are turned down. Um, but anyways, that's a nice use of it. Sounds like an old piano sample. All right, something like that. Um, now, if you wanted to use it in a more pop context, I was going to give you this little taste of a demo that I'm working on for a new song with my band. Um, this is called I Can't Remember My Dreams. And kind of what inspired me to create this effect. Don't wake up with revelations. You can hear that faint warble in the upright piano. And, uh. Can't remember my dreams. It just adds this organic touch to a piano that 
I think is uh, kind of is the difference between thinking like, oh, that's a that's a crappy synth, you know, synth piano, or like, oh, that sounds like a real piano, you know. So what you would do to get a sound more like that would just be add some compressor, and this is I mean this is pretty much all you need. We can turn down this glitch here, and we'll bring our frequency all the way down because I did have like the full range of frequency on that. So. Still a little drastic here. Turn down the depth. Even bring the compressor up. Yeah, it starts to, starts to sound more like pop. And uh, I think I'd actually rolled off some of the highs in this case. In that case, you just flip this around, bring it up, bring it up to here or so. That dark kind of analog pop piano sound. All right, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe. I'm just trying to do more and more of these tutorials. And uh, if you want to download these from my website, by all means. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got for you guys. Um, keep in touch, and we'll see you at another tutorial. If you have any questions, I just love trying to solve problems, and uh, that's kind of my goal with this channel. So please post any questions, and hopefully I can make a tutorial and answer some of them. So that's all I got. We'll talk to you guys soon.